Mike WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. I am uh, I'm feeling like, you know, beautiful skies over Camden Yards. I got my State Fair shirt on. You know, Don and I put this thing together about two and a half years ago. Our original sponsors, State Fair, our original sponsors, Fadeleys down at Lexington Market. They're going to be in the same parking lot very soon over in the 21228. Don has the, um, the chairs at. Don, if I weren't wearing my pajamas right now, I'd stand up, but I'm not going to do that. But I'm going to show the back of this uh, so everybody can see here uh, on the back of the State Fair. This is a very seasonal outfit. You would agree with that, correct? It is a seasonal outfit. The chairs are up along Frederick Road, a whole bunch of them in front of the Moeller and Gary offices on uh, Frederick Road. Jeff Moeller getting ready to sell that beautiful condo with that view behind you. I mean, like you said, yeah, it's a yeah. million dollar view, half price, baby. Yeah, yeah absolutely. No, no doubt about it. Ed is here. Uh, we're talking some golf in this segment. And, and Don, this is where usually you lead the conversation because I hate sports and you love sports, according to the last thing. Um, I did not watch any golf. But by the way, my wife watched golf last week. She Ooh, got okay. engaged in the women's final that was sudden death. She put it on. She couldn't stop watching it about a week ago Sunday. And we spent three hours watching women that I had never heard of battle each other in sudden death. So, Don, you know, you give me a hard time about the sports around here. I watched Mickelson come off the course with half the universe behind him. And yes. I said, I said, well, what's with all the same guys dressed in the same blue and white tops? And she's like, oh, dude, they're the security. I'm like, they look like frat boys well, from Auburn. Well, um, we, boy, do we have... Do we have the guy on to talk about all that? Mr. Yeah, yeah. Ed Henry, director of golf at Forest Park Golf Course, has joined us before to talk about the majors. And my gosh, time flies, Ed. I think we were talking Masters. And yes, now sir. Here, yeah. here we are talking uh, U.S. Open, which uh, was in a different way than the Masters. One of my favorite events of the year because we all know pretty much, right, Ed, when we uh -huh. get to Sunday – the leader's going to be around par. There isn't going to be any 15 or 20 unders. Is that right? Yeah, that is correct. I believe uh, maybe once or twice in the history of the U.S. Open has it ever even gotten the double digits. But uh, par will be a great score this week. Absolutely. What do you know about Torrey Pines, Ed, where, where this is being held? I'm, I mean, we all know it's in beautiful San Diego. Nestor That's a hell of a place. I oh, know yeah, that. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> You've it probably driven place. by Torrey Pines. Nestor. Tell us a little bit about the golf course, Ed. Uh, well, my understanding, the neatest part about uh, Torrey Pines to me is that, uh, believe it or not, it is a municipal golf course in San Diego run by the county. Um, obviously, it's a beautiful golf course. It's actually got two golf courses on there, uh, ocean views, and uh, just hard to believe that it's uh, a municipal golf course. I know the residents of San Diego love it. They get to play well, it pretty Well, you know, cheap. it's funny, funny story. Yeah. Funny it's story not really of... San Diego. It's La Jolla. Yeah. <laughs> well, funny, funny story, Ed, about it being a municipal golf course. So my son was uh, played lacrosse at St. Mary's College in Southern Maryland. And one of their spring breaks, they took a trip out to California to play some teams out in California. And a bunch of them were golfers. And they said, mm -hmm. uh, hey, let's we'll throw our clubs in and when we get out there, man, Tory Pines, we'll play Tory Pines. Yes, yeah, <laughs> they, yeah, yeah. they walked up and uh, asked for it. And, of course, they laughed at them. You know, it may be mm. municipal, but uh, <laughs> you ain't walking on, guys. No, so no, no. If, no. <laughs> if you're planning a trip. Uh, you may want to get a tea time a couple of months in advance. Not Absolutely. a bad idea, though, you know, like no, uh, no. It's, it's, it's a nice place. I, I want to talk about Mickelson a little bit with you because we oh, sort of skipped excellent. that. Right. I mean, that was all last month. Right. Like yeah, yeah, golf yeah. gets back on the map. We're talking <laughs> yep. about it all week. I didn't I didn't have a guess where we didn't talk about it. Um, the golf side of it for you and for him and for legacy. And I think for any of us that are old enough to remember Nicholas in 86 or, you know, mm. any of those sort of um, look, man, I'm 53. I hope, I hope I have a September in me, right? We we're all hoping <laughs> yeah, for that absolutely. one great October, you know, um, for Mickelson, I guess for woods last year, it's just good for your game, right? I mean, I, and I know we talk about this, like taking the masks off and all that. Mm -hmm. You're in the business of golf. You're, you feed your family selling golf. You need golf to be um, something that people, more people are doing than less people are doing, right? Correct. I, correct. Some thoughts about the Mickelson thing, because I thought that was a, I was a hell of a moment 
um, not for America or sports or, you know, I just thought it was a hell of a moment for the pandemic, you know, it was a Absolutely. sort of coming out of the pandemic moment that many of us will remember. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you, you obviously you factor in Phil Mickelson being one of the, the all time greats, but has not been very well for the last two years. And uh, you throw in the age of 50 and uh, yeah, it was sounds young awesome. to me. Uh, 50 doesn't sound yeah. as old as he used to. <laughs> Well, Ed, Ed that, talk but... about talk about that a little bit, Ed, because Nestor, I love that point, and then I'm going to bring it back actually to Lexi Thompson that you talked about mm -hmm. in the in the women's open momentarily, because I think there is a connection between mm -hmm. what we saw Phil do and what happened to poor Lexi the other weekend. But Ed is, I mean, you watch a lot of golf, you've played yes, a lot sir. of golf. When I look at Phil winning at 50, I, I immediately thought of Tom Brady, Nestor. And, mm -hmm. you know, the fact that he may actually be playing competitive football at 50. Uh, we, <laughs> I mean, back when we were growing up, you were driving a beer truck by your mid thirties, you know, now you're, you're at their competitive. What, what do you attribute that to Ed and Nestor? I'm going to turn to you. Is it just better conditioning, better diet year round? Absolutely. What do you think it is? Or everything. It's science. It's, a, yeah, it's everything. You're absolutely right. I, and honestly, you know, a couple of the interviews, Phil's actually given some credit to Brady. Um, you know, they played that match uh, a couple of years back, and uh, he said he has adopted some of the things, and it's purely diet, a little bit more exercise. Um, yeah, it's pretty awesome, honestly. I mean, and, and years Phil old. was hitting the ball. Phil, I, I, I kept turning. Mm -hmm. You know, I, would, I, I, I was texting my son. I was actually with my son-in-law, and I'm going. And my grandson like loves golf, and I'm going, mm -hmm. guys. He's, he's driving the ball 340 <laughs> yeah. yards. He's 50 years old. What, tell us about the equipment part, Ed, because you sell equipment. And again, mm -hmm. we're with uh, Ed Henry, director of Ed golf. Miller. At, at Ed Miller. Yep. No, I'm sorry, Ed Miller. Hey, no Ed problem. Henry. Ed no Henry's problem. another. Ed yeah, Miller. Yeah. Ed hey, Miller, yeah. uh, director of Golf Forest Park. Uh, you Don's got equipment. senior moments. It's all no, part I of the program. I do. Well, I know an Ed Henry. Uh, we, <laughs> it's all, good. It's all good. For those of you wanting to play some golf, it's classic5golf.com. Get on mm -hmm. there. Get a get a tee time. We'll talk about the Absolutely. courses. Just great courses here mm -hmm. in Baltimore. Great, great public golf courses. Mm -hmm. But Ed, talk about the improvement in the clubs and the technology since you were a young kid learning to play the game. Oh, it has absolutely gotten scary. Um the fact that I think I actually read a great stat last night. I know it's been 12 years, but the last time that Phil played Torrey Pines in 2008, uh, compared to what he just did at the PGA Championship, Phil's club head speed has actually gone up one mile per hour in those 12 years. But the the carry distance has increased by 24 yards. Um, so there's obviously some improvements in the club head, the ball. Um, but the fact that he hasn't lost any club head speed in 12 years is pretty it's impressive as in, well. In, but, insane. Uh, so do yeah. guys come in? And, I'm always mm -hmm. curious. I know how, I mean, mm -hmm. I used to kid my brother. I think my brother had enough sets in his garage that he could have opened <laughs> his own second swing. You know, he, yeah, he had yeah. set after set after set at one point in his life. When, when, when Phil drives the ball 340 yards yeah, uh, right. in the BGA, does everybody run into Forest Park on Monday morning and want that driver? Uh, we definitely had uh, we definitely had a few calls about it. What kind of driver was it? And all the other uh, fascinating. They want to know all the specs that he had. Well, they always the think it's playing. the club, not the person, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what, club, absolutely. what club is? What is the hot driver out there right now, Ed? Uh, well, he's he was hitting that Callaway Epic Speed, the new Epic Speed driver. Uh, pretty nice. But if you read up on the fine print, what was neat about it, Don, is the fact that. Uh, Phil was hitting an almost 48 inch driver at the PGA championship. Uh, that is the legal maximum limit in length. Most of the guys on tour hit about 44, 44 and a half. What would mine uh, be out of curiosity? Typically I'm a, you know, I'm an, let's say I'm an mm -hmm. average 12 or 13 handicap. What would my driver be? Most long, of the drivers, uh, 44 and a half to 45 is what you normally buy. At the, so uh, he's, he's at hitting a driver four inches longer. Yeah, yeah, almost. They have about three or something like well, that. Well, maybe yeah. that's what part of the torque, the science of that. Yeah. Well, should Absolutely. I should yeah. I come over yeah. today and have you put a forty-eight inch yeah. uh, shaft <laughs> in my driver? Then we we can definitely experiment. I believe for every <laughs> inch longer, it was about five or six miles per hour more. I think that was the science well, they had behind it. <laughs> well, well, I mean, <laughs> and this is where you know, Don, you asked the exact question I was going to ask, which is, you've been at this a long time, and, and I went out and hit golf balls twenty-five years ago, and with clubs that were fifteen years old then right uh -huh. so 
clubs I have were probably made in the eighties. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're still sitting out at heart road. I haven't touched them. I mean, I haven't gotten rid of them. I don't know what the hell I do with them. It'd probably be like giving away a VCR at this point, right? Like, you want it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But mm -hmm. I, you know, eight if you, you have an eight track, you have an eight track, uh, you have an, uh, an eight track. Your clubs are like the old eight track tape players, man. Well, I want to ask this Even because older. this is <laughs> th no, this speaks to the audience that we have here that there are golfers and not golfers, and maybe if you're not a golfer, mm -hmm. you're not even paying attention. I'm not a golfer. Watch a little. My wife was watching a little. Um, if you want to get involved in the game right now. And you want to go buy clubs cheap on the internet mm -hmm. with a sale, whatever, come out, see you, whatever we do. What what's it cost to, to like become a golfer? If you I mean, I'm talking about a bag the whole because uh, you can't golf without clubs, right? I mean, I went bowling correct. with Danny Wiseman. This is when I defeated him and I'm still bragging about it 20 years later. <laughs> I beat I went out, you know, and he had balls and bags and all that, and I bowl with mm -hmm. house balls, right? And I'm missing a finger, and he was trying to figure out all but you don't have house clubs, right? I mean, like you're going <laughs> to golf, you're going to you, give, give me a starter kit on that. Because mm -hmm. if you do get all wound up by Mickelson, if you did hit the, hit the ball when you were 30 and now you're 50 and you say, all right, tennis mm -hmm. isn't my thing anymore, but I'm going to go golf again. Um, yeah. I want to make better friends with Moeller and his kid and they, they golfer and I'll go golf five times a year with them. Uh -huh. So what does it cost me to get in? Well, I would definitely, uh, you know, the full gamut, you can go anywhere from a few hundred bucks up to a couple thousand. But obviously, if you're just getting back into it, Nestor, uh, I would recommend the two to three hundred dollar round. You can you can buy a nice set of golf clubs uh, from a man, you know, a reputable manufacturer. It shocks me. I thought it'd be yeah. more than that. Yeah. Well, hey. again, this is for you to start. You want to you want to learn for a year or two and then you want to start going into the uh, the other stuff. That epic speed that I mentioned does retail for five hundred and twenty nine dollars for one Mark. club. So I was going to ask yeah, you, you what that club cost, and I, I thought it was probably a five hundred dollar club. Yeah. And I thought yeah. for people paying a couple hundred dollars for rounds of golf and going to Tory mm -hmm. Pines, everybody I know that golfs doesn't care about fourteen dollar Malbecs, and like yeah. they just don't care. And so yeah. like they love golf so much that like like I love Springsteen. Mm. It just didn't matter. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm going. Well, we're always looking. So we're always going. looking, Nestor, yep. as Ed will tell you. Yeah, Those absolutely. of us that chase the little white ball, we're always looking. Mm -hmm. if that edge is five hundred dollars. It makes you feel more manly when you hit the ball. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Price If, that, bet, if it know? leaves yep. me with a wedge to the green instead of a five iron, I, I'm in. I'm in. Uh, like, yeah. Yeah, you, you know, you, 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 that that makes me all moist inside. When you say, <laughs> you know, I get we are. We are. Yeah, right. We are yeah, with Ed Miller. Director of Golf at Forest Park. Again, get some tee times, classic5golf.com. Yes, sir. And, and one of the things, Nestor just talked about, if you're starting to play, get back into the game. Mm -hmm. One of the things I always remember, gosh, this goes back to when I was a, a little lad, way uh -huh. back when in the dark ages, and my uncles were teaching me how to play. I always remember folks saying, you teach the game backwards. You start mm -hmm. with the short game. You start with putting and then you chip. I started Ocean City. And then you go back. Putt. Is that? Is that? <laughs> there you go. That's the is same that thing. Still, <laughs> is that still the way you try to teach the game? Do you yes, teach sir. it backwards? Yes, sir. And the reason why is, for that. Why is that? Believe it or not, the well, there's two reasons. Number one, the majority of your strokes usually come in closer to the green. It's hard to believe, but 45% of your score is normally putting. Maybe 55 if you include chipping. So you start there. And, and in terms of the mechanics of it. <laughs> Putty I'd argue with you because if I swing. came out, I'd say, if I put the ball in the woods, I'm never getting to the greens. <laughs> well, and, and of course, little kids like my, my nine-year-old grandson. They just want to whack it. Oh, he yeah, watches DeChambeau, and he mm -hmm. suddenly thinks he's happy Gilmore. You know, he's, yep, swinging, yep. he's swinging from the, as hard as he can swing because yep. he sees DeChambeau. Was that the Bobby and, Tolan way to bat? Oh, man. Remember that, oh, yeah. right? You know, so. I'm telling you. Don't yep. hit like Lee May, my dad would say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then exactly. Lee May became a hitting coach. Exactly. <laughs> ah, there you go. <laughs> well, Ed, Ed, walk us through this open because this is, man, this is a fact. We've got the John Rom factor. Yeah, yeah. We've got all kinds of, of great players. I mean, we've got, you know, it said we got these. I can't imagine. It'll be interesting. You talk me about it. Mm. We got Kepka's one twice. You got Rory. Yeah. You know, you, Rory, you, you, Kepka. You, you got Kepka, who's won back to back. I mean, it's it's really good. So I was surprised to see. I didn't realize, Ed, that Ricky Fowler 
didn't make it. He didn't yeah. qualify. He did not qualify this year. He's also been on a two-year uh, stretch that hasn't been uh, obviously that good for Ricky. But Man, um, I'll tell you, it shows you how yeah. hard, the, hard the game is, right? But oh, it's yeah. hard for me to imagine a guy like DeChambeau. Tell, tell folks, I mean, he's it's so many. I mean, our, our friend Nestor uh, Feinstein, just John Feinstein, just obviously can't abide mm-hmm. – Bryson DeChambeau and it's hard for me to imagine Bryson keeping the ball out of the rough in a U.S. Open although we may not care because he's so daggone Mm -hmm. strong and he'll swing 9,000 miles an hour what is it about Bryson that's so controversial for folks Ed out there uh just uh he's he's going totally opposite of everything uh I know that I was ever taught about golf uh you know the distance part is fascinating um to, to Bryson right now, hitting a fairway is not that important. It's all about getting closer to the green and, and having the right angle into the green. And um, that, like I said, that goes against everything that golf has kind of taught you in the past. You know, you try to keep it in play. You try to keep it in the short grass where you control it. Uh, but at his length, who needs well, to, I remember, right? So. Ed, Ed, I remember back, and, and again, for golf, and Nestor's right, half the world's going, ah, man, I don't even know what you're talking about. But at, at, the, at the Players' Championship, down there at, at TPC at Sawgrass, they had to make on 18 people are, if, if they're golfers, they're familiar, mm-hmm. you know, 18's got that beautiful lake on the left. You hit it yep. out towards the trees on the right. And Bryson had talked in the pr- practice round about maybe hitting it over the lake yeah, yeah, to yeah. the left. <laughs> so he'd have a show. They had to make it out of bounds. Yep. They had to add out of bounds to the yeah. left. So Bryson couldn't hit it over. The, I mean, it's a game you and I don't know anything about. Yep. If it's, it's like if you want to keep the whole field in it, you know, that's the neat thing about golf and the way you're taught. There's always going to be guys that are longer hitters. There are going to be guys that are more accurate hitters, uh, shorter but straighter. Um, so you try to have a, a course set up that can kind of bring everybody into the into the mix. Well, does uh, this mean that a Jordan Spieth and a Justin Tom, I mean, Justin won the players. Jordan appears mm-hmm. to be back. He seems to have gotten a little bit over those yep. Sunday yips. Who do, who do you like? I mean, I, I, I make no bones about the fact that I, I love Jordan Spieth. I just think yeah, he's no, a wonderful I, young man. Who do you like this weekend? Uh, this week, you know, honestly, I like Jordan Spieth a little bit, and uh, I'm going to go a little under the radar and hope uh, it could be a first-time major winner. But I like Tony Finau this week. Um, I believe – Tony Finau, if I remember correctly and read it correctly, he is seven for seven in cuts made at Tory. Uh, I believe he's finished in the top 25 all seven times. Uh, Tony has that length kind of like Bryson when oh. he wants to. Just a you matter know, there of again, Ed, Ed mm-hmm. you mentioned Tony, mm-hmm. and, and it, he's an interesting guy. I stood – I, I stood probably 10 yards from Tony Finau mm-hmm. uh, at, at Augusta during a practice round. Mm-hmm. And I don't think I've – you talk about there's not one way to hit a golf ball. I don't know that I've ever seen a shorter, more powerful – I mean, Finau <laughs> takes it to about his hip. You know, he Absolutely. doesn't – he doesn't <laughs> take it back at all. And then he then he's got like 120-mile-an-hour – Yep. Swing speed. He is he. I mean, he's not one of major, right? So he's one of the ones no. on that short list. Best best player that you hate to be known as that, right? The best player to have ever won a major. That is correct. Poor Tony's actually only has has one PGA Tour win, but he has a lot of top ten. So he is he is on the cusp. Is that like he'll be, to say? He's he'll knocking be on the door. He'll be mm-hmm. fun to watch. Hey, before you get out of here, get pump us up a little bit about the Classic Five. I mean, I love those courses. Remind folks. Mm-hmm what they are and we walk us through them and some of your highlights of those courses. public courses you can get on right oh man yes, just sir. great Absolutely. great 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 golf courses tell us yep, a little great. bit about them ed thank you so much don and esther yes but the classic five golf courses we are five golf courses obviously located in baltimore we have pine ridge mount pleasant uh, clifton park forest park and carroll park uh we have a wide range of fees from uh Normal rates in the morning to twilight rates in the afternoon. We can hopefully fit everybody's time, everybody's budget. We have beautiful golf courses, uh, scenic views out in the nature. We are uh, all in very good shape right now. Uh, leagues are pumping, so it's a great time to get out there. Good time to go out and play. Uh, one of my favorite things I didn't mention about uh, the U.S. Open also is that it, it always ends on Father's Day on Sunday. The final round is always on Father's Day, so. Another great uh, reason to get out and play some oh. golf, spend some time with your dad if you can, and uh, just have some fun with it. And him, the you know? weather, right? The weather. The weather is beautiful. Weather is beautiful this week. So yeah, how I those things that. train in those storms, dude? It was crazy here last year. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I love Nestor. I love that point, man. You almost, you almost made me misty because 
one of my favorite I hadn't thought about it, Ed, until you just said that. Yeah. Is that you know, I'm 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 an old guy. I'm 70 mm-hmm. years old. And I bet if I think about it now, I bet that for 55 or 60 years, I've been playing golf on Father's Day. My son is, let's see, he's in his mid 40s. So mm-hmm. since he started to play at nine or ten, uh, I, I want to say then for 35 years. One of our rituals is we play golf on yeah. the morning of Father's Day and then come back and watch the U.S. Open. You, you really have tied. It really is part yeah, of yeah. Americana, isn't it, Ed? Absolutely. Yes, sir. My dad and I used to do the same thing. Unfortunately, my dad doesn't play as much anymore, but uh, we still have a plan to get together Sunday afternoon. Going to watch the back nine of the U.S. Open. Hopefully have a have a nice cookout and uh, go from there. Absolutely. Special. You know, the thing for me on the outside of this is not like a golf person is when it comes into my world on a Sunday as mm-hmm. to who I root for or against. And mm-hmm. and I'm a serial Googler, right? So like yeah. if I hear a song, I want to know who's in the band and where the band's from. <laughs> yeah. And my wife says, oh, that's a great actor. I look up the actor. I figure out where they're from. You know, I looked up Savannah mm-hmm. Guthrie the other day because she was hosting Jeopardy to figure out, oh, she was, she's from Tucson. I didn't know, yeah. you know. There you so go. But with yeah. golfers, I do this. And I find it fascinating that, look, you know, there have been – jerks in golf and there's been racism mm. in golf and there's tiger woods who i didn't mm. who i met once who was a jerk to me and i always rooted against him which was my sort of gig you know for uh-huh. all those years he was a, <laughs> he was the villain for me he was hollywood yeah, yeah. hogan not all hogan right yeah, yeah. Uh, I, but where we are in modern golf you mentioned all of these names at all of these points don's kid and grandkids are engaged you're engaged your dad's engaged i find it fascinating the shambo has become this WWE character in the middle of all of this, because that is what makes you larger than life, right? Like he's going to be the biggest star if he can win a little bit and be a jerk enough to be a jerk, right? Like that's, it served John Daly well, right? Well, you had that recent moment, Ed, right? I mean, kind of unusual because golfers are pretty measured, but you had that recent moment where Kepka won that tournament and Bryson was walking behind him and Mm -hmm. Kepka caught him right out of the corner of his mm-hmm. eye and he go and and basically says what an idiot i mean i'm paraphrasing yeah, yeah. but he basically yeah, yeah, says yeah. what an idiot so i'm thinking oh, yeah. man bryson doesn't have a lot of friends out there no. well you know it's fascinating on that side the, the, the kid that was winning the masters a couple years ago or one that was from mm-hmm. augusta but sort of looked who was that oh, yeah. patrick reed yeah patrick i can't reed. remember his name right mm-hmm. i mean like Um, you know, the storylines for these human beings Mm -hmm. and who we like Uh and Phil Mickelson (laughs) walking off a golf course after all the drug ads, after all of the punchy and like all of that, Mm -hmm. a champion again, like that's, that's, that, that, that's why we watch. I mean, Don says, well, you don't like golf that much. Well, you know, I like good stories. I, I, I like mm-hmm. as much. I don't like movies. I do like a a sports plot line where you don't know who's going to win. It kept my wife mm-hmm. engaged in the golf tournament last <laughs> week, right? Like, there you go, right? Uh, you're right. And I'm you're googling right. all these girls, and she's like, "Why don't more? Why don't people watch women's golf?" And then this week, it's why don't the women's soccer team make as much as the? So, like, my mm-hmm. wife gets these stories because she sits and watches Savannah Guthrie all day oh. and watching <laughs> women's programming on the NBC there network. So, yeah. I I would just say for golf. Uh, you know, the good guy, bad guy thing. That's what gets people like me maybe interested in saying Absolutely. that guy's a jerk. I want him to lose. I mean, it worked oh, yeah, for Tiger yeah, Woods yeah. for 15 years. For me. <laughs> you just touched you just touched on my wife's nerve when you talk about the, the different compensation. But I, I don't want to let Ed out of here because mm-hmm. I, I want to ask him a quick question. And it goes back to what Nestor was talking about, the, uh, the U.S. female open. I watched mm-hmm. the last nine holes of that as well and was pulling for Lexi Thompson. Yeah, and she, you know, mm-hmm. looked to me like on the 15th hole, she was going to pretty much coast in. And mm-hmm. I don't think I, I don't I don't mean this in a negative way. The pressure got to her. She made yep. a number of bad swings between 16 and 18. 18 I thought she yeah. handled it beautifully uh, mm-hmm. because she clearly the, the she wasn't up to the moment. Ed, for those people in our audience who are not golfers. And I'm sure you've coached young men and women. Phil was up to the moment. I mean, he was chasing mm-hmm. father time as well as winning a major. 
Yeah. Uh, and I think Nance, I think that's how Nance ends up calling it, right? Mm-hmm. Phil yep. beats father time. It's time. Good yep. One of the, one of the great calls. So what is it? How do golfers overcome that nerve, that choke thing that Lexi experienced and come out on the other side? Talk about that a little bit, the mental part of the game. Well, that's the, to me, that's the neat thing about golf. Uh, very similar to life is, um, and I'm sure this is true in a lot of sports, but in golf, you're going to lose most of the time. <laughs> you really do. Um, and you just got to keep kind of plugging along. Uh, you deal with the, uh, the bad breaks or the bad putts. And uh, you just know that tomorrow is a new day. It's another day and you can try it again. Um, hopefully she's actually watched some, some old tapes of Phil, because that's probably one of my favorite things about Phil is, uh, Phil's a very gracious loser. He's always learned from his losses. Well, hopefully he always loses, learns from his losses. And uh, hopefully Lexi will do the same thing. Lexi's pretty young. Um, going back to Lexi, I was actually a little bit surprised not because she has won a major before. Uh, this would have been her second one. So I, I really thought that she was going to do all right. But um, you could see it. Ed. You could yeah, see it. Yeah, I mean, it. those of us who are golfers, <laughs> we know. I know that feeling trying to win oh, a $5 yeah. Nassau. You yeah. know, I, I know, I know how I feel. And, yeah. and I can re- I said in the room that day, I said, oh, man, I said to my grandson, I said, Mm-mm. she's yeah. she's she's not feeling it. And, <laughs> yep. and you, when you step up and step away, we all know the signs. And she Absolutely. was between clubs. It was it was nasty. Now, hey, Ed, all real, I did, real, I mean, I'm working, you know, Baltimore positive. My, I kept hearing my wife saying, oh, no, no. <laughs> yeah. It yeah, that's what, like that. That's, what that's exactly like. how it went. Hey, that's how hey, it went. Yeah, Nestor, <laughs> Nestor asked you a question before we let you get out of here. I think it's a good question. He said, hey, yes, I'm getting started. I want new clubs. If folks want to come over to you or one of the other classic fine, they've got a, a young man or woman they want to get mm-hmm. involved, or they just feel like it now. Can they come over and you'll help them? If get I want to share a life of frustration and, yes, sir, <laughs> and losing, yeah, I'll come yeah, see yeah. you, right? Yeah, you'll yeah. help them get the right clubs and all that yes, stuff. Yes, sir. We'll definitely guide you in the right direction. You know, we're not going to always push everybody into a brand new clubs. That's the neat thing about golf. There's many avenues to get clubs. Um, it's more about getting you on the golf course, getting the experience, and hopefully you'll get sucked in, and then you'll start to purchase your own clubs. But every one of our courses has a PGA professional there. We would definitely invite you down. Come talk to one of us. We'll try to get you fit for a set of clubs, get you started, and um, you'll start enjoying this great game of golf as well. And if you can't have a five dollar Nassau with Don, you can at least go to Nassau with Don and have a five dollar drink. <laughs> one that of the sounds great, good too. <laughs> one of the great go- local golf pros, uh, Ed Miller, folks. Classic Five Golf dot com. Get out there, make a tea time, That's make it. some memories with Dad uh, on Father's Day. Pull, have a cold one, and Nestor would say a crab cake and enjoy the yep. U.S. Well, absolutely, crab cake tours yeah. getting going in, uh, in the uh, month of August. Ed, always appreciate the visits with you, man. I appreciate the knowledge, Thanks. appreciate the passion as well, my brother. Thank you, Nestor. Thank you, Don. You guys have a great. Day. I just learned Thank you, you so can get, you can get golf clubs for a couple hundred bucks. I, I really did not know. That. I figured maybe secondary go. market or whatever, but I didn't realize mm. that's good to know that if I yeah, ever want to get back in, because my wife, man, like. She's got some weird thing about golf more so than tennis, you know, where I'd be like, I go hit the tennis ball. She's like, nah, you know, golf. It's just something muscling up that would, you know, that the sound that when you hit it perfect, you know, that yeah, it's, it's it. The and you, and you know, <laughs> you know, Nestor, that, that Ed's going to be in my head now. I'm going to have this thing. I'm going out and measure my shaft. If, if I need the 40, <laughs> hey, listen, Ed, am I going to hit it all over listen, the place? Ed, with Ed, the, Ed don't let him fool you, you, all right? I know he spent a life in government and, 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 and education. He's got $529 for a club. If you, oh, can, you, if you can promise him <laughs> that it it's going to give him that and, feeling. Oh, yeah. I'll promise oh. you'll hit it longer. I don't know about ne- straighter, ne- but well, longer. I, well, I'm going to say, <laughs> Nestor, I'm going to tell you right now, if Ed tells me I can go to that 48-inch shaft and pick up 20 yards – Put me in, coach. <laughs> there you go. You know, and, and the other part of this, he'll feel like Mickelson when he does it. Oh, and baby. that's kind of the whole vibe of golf to me. <laughs> if you go out yep. there and for a minute, just pretend you're Jordan Spieth, you know? There you yep. go. Exactly. Ed Miller joining us exactly. here. Uh, Classic Five, get out and visit him. Um, You know, I, I, Mount Pleasant, man. I, I just, every time I think mm-hmm. of Mount Pleasant, I think, 
Skipjack's practice. Gene Ubriaco. Yeah. What, what time's practice? Practice at 10 or 11 this morning, coach. Uh, Don Moeller <laughs> is a part of our Baltimore Positive contingent here. Everything we're doing is at BaltimorePositive.com. We're doing the Crab Cake Tour in August. Uh, we have various officials coming up, uh, including a Baltimore County Executive Johnny O. Barry Glassman joining us up in Harford County. Stuart Pittman joining us down in Anne Arundel County. All of that coming in July. But first things first, make sure that you get your chair out in front of State Fair uh, out on Fred Road for the big parade coming up on 4th of July weekend. I am Nestor. He is Don. We together out on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat, Instagram, anywhere you are, we are WNST AM 1570. Towson, Baltimore. We never stop talking. Baltimore, positive.